So I believe that Dr. Rhodes will be joining us. Welcome everyone. Hi, happy Monday. <laughs> um, good to see you all, um, or at least to see you, Yvonne. And what an amazing, I was just so happy to meet you in person. <laughs> <laughs> it was Me so too. great. It was great to be there in person and see everybody. Yeah, it was yeah. a great event too. I just really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. I'm so glad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I actually have uh, just a little time on the agenda. I was hoping folks might want to share if if they feel like about the the event. Um, but let me just check here. Let's see. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna call the meeting to order. And um, I am calling the April 3rd meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly to order at 12.03 p.m. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, I am aware that um, Dr. Or, uh, Ms. Bridges will not be able to join us today. And I'm just going to check in quickly like I normally do at the beginning of a meeting to see if Alexis can join. Um, and I did get a note from Dr. Shabazz that he is uh, here, but he's um, unable to participate. Oh, he's there. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Shabazz. Let me just check in with you first. Um, do you do you are you able to participate in the meeting, or how are you feeling? I'm uh, I'm here. If I can, I will. But otherwise, I'll uh, send information later. I sure. Have that sounds great. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I'll just check in to see if Irv is joining. It just occurred to me that I didn't send you guys the minutes, so can we table the minutes sure. till the next meeting? Yes. Okay. So I'm looking at the agenda. First, I'm going to do a sound check, um, and I'll start with you, Hala. Welcome. Can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and Yvonne? Yes, I can hear you. Excellent. And we heard Dr. Shabazz. Yes. Okay. And Jennifer, I think um, we can hear you, but let's just make sure. I can hear you. Okay, good. All right. So looking at the agenda today, um, I did have a few minutes that I thought we might um, just debrief about the, the, uh, town hall, the big payback screening, and the entire day really last Thursday. Um, we have uh, a lot of work to do on our survey. And so I, uh, Dr. Rhodes and I met with the Dunahue Institute earlier today. And so we'll have some, um, we have to go through the rest of the survey. If we would like to meet our um, launch date of April th of April 11th. Um, and just a note, we will not be meeting next Monday. Jennifer, it's officially a holiday next Monday. Is that right? Or is it the Friday? I didn't think there was a holiday till the 17th. So is Easter not? Easter's put, uh, not. Uh, oh, okay. So Monday is a, the town offices are open on Monday? Yes. Oh, that is really good to know. Okay. I don't know if that poses a conflict for others, but it would. it's good to know that we, in fact, can have a meeting that day. Um, and then we have some other items to discuss, but depending, mm -hmm. I'd really like, I need, I think making sure that we get through the survey is um, most critical today. And then of course, we have two periods of public comment. I'm gonna begin uh, now with the first period of public comment, um, and then we'll have one later in the meeting as well. So if you are in the audience and you'd like to make public comment, please use the raise hand feature and I'll recognize you for up to three minutes. Um, we did receive a public comment 
via email that I got about 10 minutes ago that I'll forward to everyone. Um, but if you would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand now. Hi, Dr. Rhodes, can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay, great. And we can hear you well too. We just got started. We just reviewed the agenda, did a sound check, and we're in our first period of public comment. And um, Ms. Bridges will not be joining us today. And I think Alexis will be joining us, but just a little bit late. <clears throat> All right. So not seeing any hands raised, I'm going to move right to um, just a little debriefing on Thursday's event. Uh, actually, let me see. I want, well, I'll come back to Alexis on that. I She might have some thoughts to offer, but if anybody would like to offer thoughts on Thursday's event, um, this would be a, the time to do that. And Dr. Rhodes, I'll, I'll share that we we missed you, um, and we did acknowledge you a couple different times, and um, it was a really well attended and very very rich event. Um, it was wonderful to have Robin here. She was here for the whole day um, and got to see, uh, have a, a tour with, welcome Pamela. Um, she got to have a tour with Ms. Bridges of the Civil War Tablets and then a tour with Counselor Lopes of the Ancestral Bridges uh, exhibit over at Frost Library um, before uh, coming to the big event in the evening. So Pamela, I don't know if you can hear us doing a sound check with you. Yes, I can hear you. I'm sorry it took me a while to get in. I was having trouble with uh, logging into Zoom for some reason. Oh, no worries. We were just, um, we did our first period of public comment and now we were just um, seeing if anyone wanted to make comments about Thursday night's um, event. So, have other people yeah. commented? No, okay. um, nobody has. Uh, well, Yvonne commented sort of before we started the meeting. Uh, <laughs> um, and Dr. Shabazz is a little under the weather and um, Dr. Rhodes wasn't there. <laughs> so, holla. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say Thursday's event was like amazing and phenomenal. So much gratitude to you, um, Robin Bruce Simmons. And the young, yeah, the young people really inspired me. I have faith more in tomorrow. Um, watching how the the students took charge, uh, not 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 took charge in that kind of way, but just the knowledge, the the thirst, the hunger to make a difference, have an impact, and just beyond beyond. So I I haven't processed it all or unpacked it all, but I'm left with feeling more hopeful and inspired to keep on keeping on. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Just gave me the chills. <laughs> um, and I will share that we received some really terrific feedback. Town Manager Bockelman sent some just um, really wonderful feedback. He was there with his partner. Um, we also heard feedback from Michael Elliott at the college who was not in attendance, but who had heard um, terrific reviews from folks um, that did attend. And I want to second what Hala said about the students. Um, it was just really amazing to have their energy in the room and it, it made a difference. Um, Robin, I think, is more committed now than ever to um, not only our community and uh, in just in um, sort of processing everything with her after um, she is just even more committed than ever, it seems, to doing this work of working with different communities. I think it was really inspiring for her as well. So um, thanks to everyone for making it happen. And when Alexis gets here, I'd love to check in with her too, because I she was in such an interesting position doing all the tech stuff and <laughs> interfacing with everything, you know. 
Um, so, all right, excellent. So I'm going to just see, I was buying a little time too, because, um, I was waiting for, uh, I, I gave, I told Carrie at the Donahue Institute that we would probably be taking up other things until about two 15. So she could make last minute edits. So one of those things that I'd like to bring up is, um, on the agenda, it should be pretty quick, and I did speak a little bit with Yvonne about this at the event. Um, there's an item on the agenda that says ACC grant. Um, way, way, way back when, um, when we first started as a committee, we applied for a grant with the Amherst Cultural Council. Um, the ground, grant amount that we applied for was $5,000. I think this must have been in the first two weeks of our time together. Um, and the purpose of the grant was to uh, document our work. Um, so if we had been awarded the $5,000, then the purpose would have been to uh, document our work as a committee. Um, and I still just want to set that aside as something that I think would be really amazing for us to pursue potentially. But um, just to keep things focused, the Amherst Cultural Council awarded us $500 um, as a grant, and they are giving us the opportunity to amend our um, application so that we can use that $500 towards some other uh, component of our work. So I wanted to bring that up. I think um, Pamela is very much in the loop um, now with this, so can help us navigate this as well. Is that right, Pamela? Did I understand that right? Uh, yes, I've been pulled into the conversation, so I think I might be able to help um, navigate. But as you said, they're, they're looking for an amendment to the grant application um, so the funds can be used. So. So I don't know if anyone has ideas and, and I would keep in mind that the 500 isn't, we're not limited by that. So if we were to able to, if we wanted to pursue something that cost more than that, we would just have to find other means for, um, but we do, I think, want to make sure that if we're unable to amend it to receive the grant that the cultural council can uh, take the money and use it for other purposes um, and other grantees. So I want to be able to come back to them. Um, so does anyone have any um, ideas about how we might want to use that or how we might want to amend the application? And I don't know, Pamela, if you if you had any ideas just in talking with um, the Cultural Council last week. So um, I actually love the original idea. Uh, I don't know whether there's an opportunity to um, go back to that original idea and apply for additional funds. Um, I think what the documentary showed was the importance of of really recording this work from the beginning, which you know you've been working at it for a long period of time, but through interviews, I think you would still be able to capture the story of the process here in in, in Amherst. Um, so beyond that, I'm not certain. I think one of the purposes could have been like the showing of the documentary, right? That would have fit would have fit in with the uh, auspices, would have fit under the auspice of the Cultural Council, but I don't know um, what other thoughts you might have for how to use that, to use the funds. I, I guess um, Alexis is raising her hand, but I, I actually, I'm gonna ask a question, Alexis, because you might be able to answer this. What opportunities would there be for, um, for someone from Amherst Media to even start to put together an outline of what would be needed for the group to create a documentary. Like, so could that $500 be spent for someone who would write up, you know, a proposal of what the work would look like to create a documentary? And, and I have no idea what 
what the cost of that would be, but I'm just thinking aloud at this point. Uh, Alexis, please, that's a wonderful question. Um, yeah, so I, so I just, I guess I want to make sure that I understand your qu question. Um, that are are you saying that the five hundred would be used specifically just for the writing up of a proposal in order to apply for more funds? Well, um, not well. I I think it, um, in addition to applying for more funds, but so that you would know the scope of the work in order, or you could document what the scope of the work would be to create a documentary, and so. A lot of things have happened over the last few days, so I didn't get a chance to share this um, with Michelle, but when I was at Smith College, we actually um, created a small uh, documentary piece about Otilia Cromwell, um, uh, the first known um, Black student at Smith. And uh, originally, I had high hopes for having this huge you know hour and a half long documentary with all of this information and then um, the individuals who have the real technical skills <laughs> rolled it back into something that would be more feasible um, uh, and we we were uh, on the campus able to interview her a surviving relative who's also a smith alum um, interview uh, students and alums um, and other people from around the country and then produce um, well, you know, a short film that I think it's about a half an hour in length. But that took hours and hours of like interviews and, um, and someone with the technical wherewithal to really put that together. And so I'm wondering whether the $500 could be used to pay someone to do that preliminary work of like um, designing what the project would look like, creating, you know, the roadmap to go forward, and so that you could uh, actually create a documentary based on the work that you've done uh, here, which would obviously take a lot more than five hundred dollars. But if the five hundred dollars could get you started, or at least create the roadmap, that seems to me would be in alignment with the sort of the original purpose. And um, and I was I don't know all of the uh, all of the services that can be conducted by Amherst Media. So I'm wondering, like, could 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 it could the assembly pay someone at Amherst Media to do that work and whether $500 would be a start or a portion, I, I don't know, so. Yeah, so um, I think that the, that's a, I think that that's a great idea. And I think that depending on what the vision is for the final product would change how we would go about it, right? So I, I think that as, as you are, um, suggesting it I think that that's that's totally a possibility that's me not as the executive director of Amherst Media I would absolutely have to check in with him um but um I I can see it going a number of ways um and I think that another thing that we were talking about too if I remember correctly was the possibility of having oral histories being recorded and I think that that's something that's totally possible within just that $500 budget. Um, of course, we would also have to think about like, okay, well then like, is is this becoming an exhibit? Where is this being exhibited? You know, there's like other things that come with that, but I think that just in terms of like the preliminary work, if we were intending on doing um, a documentary style piece, um, it, we would just need to know like, what is the final vision? Like, is are we intending to create something like the big payback? Are we intending on creating something that's different from that? Are we, you know, so I think um I, I think that like knowing what the what the vision is can help in in laying that framework, but I I, I don't see how that's like I, I like I I like your suggestion and I I, I see that as a great possibility. Yeah, I think that's a really, really uh, excellent suggestion, Pamela. And, um, you know, the public comment that we received by in writing today, which I'll forward to everyone, talks about um, 
documenting our work in here in Amherst um, similarly. Um, so I think that is something that the community would like to have and hold and be and, and have be part of um have part of our work. So and I think that amending the application essentially to say like we had asked for 5,000 and we got 500. So what we can do with this 500 is we can create a roadmap um, with partners such as Amherst Media uh, to um, determine what would be needed to pursue a documentary of our work. And then I think the question beyond that is applying for other um, funding for that, um, either through the Cultural Council or through Mass Humanities or through a variety of other. And I know Rep Dom would be really helpful probably in helping us think through that. She's she's been helpful um, in connecting us with Mass Humanities um, and others like that. So is that, if does any uh, assembly member have uh, does that sound like a good plan forward in terms of that? Because what I could do, if so, is I could work with Pamela and Jennifer to rework the language so that we can get an amendment ready to then send back to the Amherst Cultural Council. But we will, of course, bring it for review by the full assembly prior to doing that. Yes, Yvonne. So, um, who are you talking to with the um? Great. Arts yes. Council. So it's um, Matt and Matt Holloway. And uh, is it Julianne is um, Juliana? Uh, let's see. I'm going to pull it up. Yep. Julianne Applegate. Um, the I think you should talk to them first and find out what the scope of what they'll fund is before you do a lot of work on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great, let me just, because yeah, I think it used to be, it might be different now. I think that they're, you know, they always have been open to shoring up organizations, um, projects, you know, but I think often they're looking for something that there's a tangible outcome, you know, and this seems like it would be an investment in a project that we would have to do the fundraising and organizing for moving forward. So there had to be some kind of, um, guarantee that we would do it you know because they're giving us money so that we can do this thing so i think that a lot it would go a longer way if we are completely dedicated to completing this documentary and we have an idea of what that documentary is and then we're using this money as a way to finalize or formalize the uh, uh, you know it's like a it's like a strategic plan for this project you know and I think that they might fund it if they know that we're dedicated to completing to the final project is this what I'm saying and and, I, and that would be the final project would be their investment which is the video <clears throat> um so I would have a conversation with them first to find out if they're willing to fund this kind of you know adjustment okay that's a great suggestion. Yeah, I, I'm looking at the amendment request. I guess the one question that I would have immediately is, um, Pamela, did you get a sense when you spoke to them what sort of timeline they needed us to complete this uh, in? I, the, I think that the timeline is sooner rather than later because I think that they already were past the reporting period for the original grant, so. Um, exactly. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, I wonder, Pamela, would you be would you be willing to set up a meeting where we could meet with Julianne and talk to her about what we discussed? And um, I can send out the email to get that started and and just find a time. I think that's a really good suggestion. Suggestion. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, Yvonne, your hand is still up. Did. And I also saw Alexis's, I think Alexis's hand went down since. Um, I was basically going to say what Ms. Mendez said. Okay, perfect. All right. So that, there's that. <laughs> and I do have the survey in my inbox now. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. Um, as I said, Dr. Rhodes and I met with 
the Dunahue, we reviewed all of the notes from our last meeting so that changes could be made. And then we reviewed the rest of the survey. And so we have some outstanding questions and things that we just need to address here. So if you just give me one second here. <clears throat> Okay, can everyone see my screen? All right, great. So um, just to review some of the changes that we made here um, based on our last discussion um, is that we included um, some additional language here saying if you have any questions about the survey, including the need for translation or a paper copy, please contact. Right now we have my name, email address, and I plan to put um, the office number, um, but I am also open to other ideas like having Pamela's name and email address um, and phone number, um, which may be even a better way to go about it. I don't know, Pamela, how you feel or how other members feel. Um, and then, of course, we have the Dunahue there just in case there are technical issues with accessing the survey. Um, if yeah, I think it's certainly your choice, either myself or you, whomever. Yeah. Okay. I think maybe even both. I mean, the, the what we don't want to happen is that somebody gets the survey and they don't know how to get their questions answered. They don't know. They try to reach one and can't get, you know, so, um, okay. Any other comments or questions on, on that? All right. I'm just going to be looking for hands as we move through here. Um, so here we have, uh, this question we didn't have any issue with last time. This was just, um, asking about, if you live in Amherst. And as we go through this, I'm going to say um, who sees um, the various questions, just so that you have an understanding of how it's going to flow as we go through, and if we want to make any changes to who's seeing what. Um, so here we changed it um, to as Black and of African heritage. Um, and so if you, we're going to come back to sort of where it flows, but I want to go through the questions first. And so, um, here, let me just, um, do this. Uh, actually, you know what, I'm not going to do any. Uh, okay. Um, how do I? Sorry, let me just see something. I'm just going to try to reopen this. What's the rationale for prefer not to answer? Sorry, one second, um, Dr. Shabazz. Okay, um, this one here, you mean? And at other places. Okay. Um, I don't have I don't have a good answer to that question. Um, I assume it's just if somebody doesn't want to answer the question. <laughs> um, they have an option so that they can continue moving with the survey and because you can't unlock, I think you have to answer the question to unlock the next question. So I guess I would say that that's the rationale, but um, I could certainly ask, what are your thoughts on that though? If it doesn't have a, um, a good function, a good reason, then I wouldn't have it there. If, uh, I, I'm hearing from a utilitarian point that the survey, electronic survey, this isn't, wouldn't concern the paper survey, but the electronic survey doesn't advance unless you click an option. And, and so you're providing a third option for someone that doesn't want to say yes, but then doesn't want to say no. But we really need to know either yes or no. So 
for me, it would be, yeah, you'd want them to advance. You'd want them to answer yes or no and um, and 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 advance from answering yes or no. But again, if it's a utilitarian thing that um, but it seems like it must there's something more to it than utility utility of the of the program. It's um, actually it, it, you know, it's usually in most surveys they give the uh, participant the option of answering a question or not answering a question, and um, and 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 the, and the data from that is you know is, is whether it's relevant to our purposes or not, but uh, it would be interesting just to know uh, if people saw this question and decided not to answer it. If you got a large percentage of people deciding not to answer it, then that's uh, information in and of itself. Uh, Alexis? Um, being that the survey is anonymous in nature, I guess I, I, I agree with Dr. Shabazz, and I guess I'm wondering like how that helps us to have that as an option when, when it's anonymous anyways. And I, I would argue that like, if we have to be able to get data from this, I don't know how that, that helps us to have that option there. Well, I mean, it's a, it, it, here's, here's an argument for having in there. Let's say you had 20% um, of the people who took this survey, they said they prefer not to answer. Well, that, that would be an extraordinary number. And why that would be, we wouldn't know, but it certainly is data that uh, would be germane to the, uh, the final compilation of this, uh, this survey. But no pun intended, the fact that non-Black people can access the survey, it could be just white noise. It could be people who, who don't see themselves as Black, but then don't want to answer yes or no, and they're just throwing you know, and it's just noise. It's not telling us anything. And even giving them the option to say prefer not to answer isn't telling us anything. We the the, the function of this is is to survey toward a program of black reparations in this town. If you don't want to do the survey, if you don't want to to participate in giving us an understanding about that, so and, and in particularly here identifying whether you are black or not, then you, you don't even need to do the survey. So I, I'm just really <laughs> begging, begging the question because yeah. you know we, we've got to seem like you want to get people's buy-in and not give like an option to to just not answer. I mean, just don't do the survey if you, if you can't answer the most basic question of whether you're you're black and you're speaking as a black person, on reparations uh, for Black people, or you're not Black and you're speaking on it. Yeah, it, 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 you know, for me, uh, it really, I mean, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it, it's uh, again, it's one of those questions that are that are usually a part of any survey that the um, person taking the survey has the right not to answer the question. Now they could take that and then just skip it if they wanted to. I, I, I mean, again, it doesn't matter to me, but it's just one, again, it's there because it is a regular survey function to have that kind of question in there. Yeah, and I, I'll make sure that it doesn't prevent somebody from continuing. Um, so if we don't have it um, in, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get the answer to that question. Um, and Alexis, I do see your hand is still raised, so I want to check in with you again. Oh, oh, uh, um, well, I think I guess I'm my my final thoughts. Is I I feel like we shouldn't have it just because if we get a whole but I if it did end up in that scenario where like a bunch of people answered that, then I feel like we'd have to like go through this all over again because we wouldn't get the answers that we wanted. So yeah, so I'm gonna take my hand down and yes, thank. Okay, so unless um, folks want to bring this one to a vote, I don't see any, per personally, I don't see any reason that we need to do that because I did hear Dr. Rhodes say that he's okay either way, but um, please correct me if I'm wrong. 
Okay. All right. And then I should say that um, if you identify as Black and of African heritage, you will see the entire survey. So what I'm going to be pointing out as we go along is how it's set up right now. If you are, if you do not identify as Black and, and of African heritage, um, so that you'll know which questions um, non-Black folks will not be seeing as it stands right now. All right. There's one exception, but we'll get to that in just a second. Okay. So here, um, do you identify as a descendant of people enslaved in the United States? Um, and this, again, um, coming back to Dr. Shabazz's question and the whether or not to include or prefer not to answer, does your feeling change when it comes to this particular question? I would again say if you could, if they, they, would, they would just skip. If they don't know, they don't know. If they're not a no, and if they're not a yes, then if the system will allow them to just skip on, then let them skip on and they'll, they'll, they'll effectively be telling us they prefer, prefer not to answer or they're skipping. But otherwise, then it's yes, you're a, you identify as a descendant or no, you don't identify as an ascent, a descendant or that you don't know. And I think those are the three valid things we need to, to understand from people survey. Great. So here I'm going to just click on yes, because we've added um, one pathway. Um, this is one in which not all Black people will see, only people that answer yes to this. And we need to do a little bit of work on this. This was um, in relationship. Oh, it didn't work. Um, okay. You know why? Cause I guess it's out of flow. So we'll, we'll get to it. It's the question. I, I see what she did now. It's the question on peoplehood. Um, so only people that answer yes to this will receive a question on peoplehood that we need to do some work on, but it comes a little bit later. So let's move on from, from here. Um, and then we have this question that everybody will see. Again, here we have we have the prefer not to answer. I think the key here is figuring out if it essentially works as a skip. If someone can just hit this arrow and not answer the question, we don't need the prefer not to answer. I think that's sort of what we've landed on here. All right. All right. And then we reviewed um, thinking about your own experience. Um, and then this is where folks will have the opportunity. And again, this is only for, yes, Yvonne. I'm only sorry. Can you go back to the last question? Of course. Yeah, sure. So um, I think in that instance with um, whether someone agrees or not about reparations, I think it's a very complicated um, question. And that, um, I guess my question to the committee is, are there some folks who are taking this survey who could answer, I'm not sure? You know what I mean? Or is it that we're targeting folks who already have made up their mind about what, you know, what reparations means and if it can be distributed? Do you know what I'm saying? I think that um, it might be valuable to find out how many people really don't know and they're relying on us or other people for information so they can make up their mind. But my, my question to the committee is, is this survey going out to folks whose minds have already been made up? And then that's not an issue, right? You don't have to ask that. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go to Alexis and then Dr. Rhodes. Yeah, I guess it would really be helpful to know what information we are, like what are we planning to do with the information that we get from this particular question? And like, if it's, if it is anonymous, how are we, even then, how are we using that information? And so I, I agree with Ms. Mendez that like, if we do find out who, who if, if people are just generally uninformed, that's something that we can do something with. But even then, you know, we're, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of vagueness around it. And so I guess I'm wondering, yeah, I, I guess another question that I have is like, how exactly are we using 
the information that we get from this particular question. Dr. Rhodes? In, in, uh, in, in terms of that particular question, it's 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 really uh, gets at the heart of of uh, what our charge is, uh, and if we are going to be dealing with reparations here in Amherst, we really do need to know um, if, if people have suffered some harms one way or the other, uh, and uh, and and that 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 information. Uh, and this is this is this is information that is really critical uh, because if you if you get a preponderance of people who answer no, uh, then that that tells us a hell of a lot, and would go right into the heart of uh, why we're doing this anyway. Uh, the assumption is that uh, reparations in Amherst, uh, on on some people's mind, needs to happen, but how many people's mind? What percentage of the population believes that? Uh, et cetera. It is, yeah, I, I don't even know how, if we don't have that question in there, then why would we be doing this survey? Um, I think we should have the question. I think we should keep in prefer not to answer, or I don't know, so that we also are capturing, Yes. Uh, you know, like folks who aren't sure. You yes. Know, so, so that'll tell us something as well. It'll tell us we need to have a bigger, let's say, education aspect of the work we're doing so people will be more informed so they can have a decision. You know what I mean? Okay, let me just make sure I understand, Yvonne. So you'd like it to say the options to be yes, no, prefer not to answer, or I don't know. Add I don't know to this one. They, well, they, I think it's just, I, I think it's just language. Do we want people to say, I don't know, mm -hmm. or prefer, or prefer not, not to answer? answer. Yeah, you know, yeah, some yeah. people have an opinion, but they prefer not to answer. But when you ask someone, you know, do you know, right. you know, and they say, I don't know, you know, I think a lot of folks who get to that, I'm just saying, you know, I know people who will get to that question and say, well, what exactly does reparations mean? Maybe I'm not right, you know, with a hundred percent of like I'm not for you know cash payments, which is what my definition of reparations. You know, I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. That's not my definition of reparations, because, but it could be someone else's, and then they'll read that into this question and say, "Well, I don't know how to answer this." Yeah, and I I just want to push back a little bit on what you said, Dr. Rhodes. Um, I don't, from my perspective, our charge is less about determining if there's community-wide support for reparations and more about determining how the already reparations legislation and reparations dedicated reparations fund should be used. So we've already committed to reparations. And because this isn't a randomized representative survey, my concern is that if our only respondents are people who do not agree that reparations in some way is um, appropriate, then we're going to have a very skewed, I think, or, or I guess we're going to have data that's not actually going to help us because even if are I I I is there a scenario where enough people come out and say that they do not believe reparations should occur in Amherst and where we turn back time and say we're going to give the two million dollars back to the town council and we're not going to develop you know so it's just like to me I, I didn't like this question to begin with and I don't really understand why it's here and it has such a high placement in the survey but. Uh, particularly because it's not a randomized representative survey. Um, you, you know, I could I could take that argument and say, yeah, it makes sense. But on the other hand, uh, we are collecting data, and it seems to me, if I'm out there doing this survey, that I'd really want to know what the general population uh, uh, has to say, uh, their what they what their beliefs are. It has, and as you suggested, it has zero impact on what we're going to do because we've already been given that charge. We've already have um, the, uh, the commitment for the $2 million. It's not going to change that, but it does 
what it does do, it gives us a, uh, an idea, a general idea of how the overall population feels about that. And that I think is very valuable. Not to have it, it's like, it's like we were, we were walking around in, in some kind of vacuum thing. Oh, well, you know, every, the entire town of Amherst agrees with, agrees with it, uh, et cetera. Uh, whereas, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's better to know than not know. Thank you, Dr. Rhodes. I saw Dr. Shabazz and then Alexis. Uh, Alexis can go before me. Alexis? No pressure. Okay. Um, so I guess I also, I just, I, I, I guess I'm still coming back to like, how are we using it? Like at the end of the day, you know, all of this information, I, I agree would be helpful to know, but I guess that's where I'm like, I'm, I'm inclined to then choose, you know, the, I don't know question, because then at least the, I don't know question or the, the, the I don't know option lets us know how many, or, or, or maybe the option, the options are something to do with how much I know about it or how much I understand it. Um, because I agree that like our charge is to do the thing. Um, and this is supposed to inform how we do the thing. And if part of that, which I, I feel like does have to do with education at the end of the day, does a no answer tell us that people need, like, is that telling us that people need more education or does that tell us? And then we're deciding to use that information as like, okay, well then this many people have their mind made up already, but we're still going to do it anyways. Like, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm still confused about how we're implementing this information in what we need to do to complete our charge. Thank you, Alexis. Dr. Shabazz? You know, um, I think that uh, it's a good discussion we're having here and, and there is a, a value to having um, the, 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 the some form of question that gets at uh, a snapshot at this time, at this point in time of where um, those members of the community who bother to take the survey are on, uh, you know, in relation to supporting the, the plan we're charged with developing. Um, so my question might be whether, and we don't have to do it on the floor here necessarily, but whether the question ought to be tweaked to, uh, uh, to instead recognize where the current standpoint is, that we're not, as, as you said earlier, Michelle, we're not at a standpoint of a question of whether there ought to be some form of um, of material uh, uh, funding for programs for for direct benefits or for whatever kinds of uh, work initiatives that we're putting under the label of reparative justice or reparations. Um, is there support for that as has been established by the town council? Um, I just think if we could somehow tweak it to recognize that's the stage we're in. We're not at the stage of, of, of asking whether one should do X or one should not do X. We're at the question of, do you support that we're doing X? Mm. Uh-huh, yep. Uh, Dr. Rhodes. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting, Dr. Gray. I mean, if, if we were going to rephrase that question in terms of support, that's a whole different ball of wax. However, uh, it still would be very useful information because it's yes, no, or or I don't know, or don't have enough information. But in general, uh, we have we, we're going to be going forward. But every year, when money is asked for. Uh, we have to get two thirds of the council to approve it. Uh, I certainly would not want to be accused by anyone of saying, hey, well, you don't even know what the general population thinks about reparations. You never even asked a question. And that, I can, that kind of charge is, to me is more detrimental than anything else. 
that you refuse to answer, you refuse to ask the question. Uh, so you don't even know. Yet you had the opportunity to know. Yeah, and, and so if I could quickly follow up, I'm in agreement, we need to ask. It's just what I said before though, are we asking, do you support our doing X? Or do you, uh, uh, you know, because that's where we already are, rather than saying, should we do X or should we not do X? Um, yeah, it's, just a, it's just a slight difference there. And here's the rationale that I would say is, is important in making the distinction. Uh, throughout these years, we've been sitting here and even before, you know, but as this conversation grows, so often what I hear is, is that many people, and I'm even saying black people, the default position is to probably is to be kind of um, not supportive unless you clarify what reparations is. Okay. They, they, and, and so just having it in the sentence there, it sort of begs the question. And if there's no sense of what it is, and it's just the generic idea of mm -hmm. some, re some repayment for harms done by slavery, racism, or discrimination, okay? Which if you think about it with that or, that means that you're saying even somebody who got a ticket today unfairly discriminated, say driving while black, you're, you're, you're lumping them in as, 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 a, as a just cause for reparations. You know, there's, there's gonna be disagreement. But if it's about the uh, trying to get an assess, and the disagreement is, is, is what we're trying to answer in the report we're gonna generate in June, because by then we're hoping to have a more clear articulation of what are the initiatives, what are the scope, what is the, the framework of what we can do on a local level, that's what we are charged with uh, publishing, of putting out there for people. But we don't have any articulation of that to offer people in this survey. It wouldn't make sense to try to like give examples. Maybe it would be this, or maybe it would be that. That, that would be a ridiculous approach. But to say, do you support where we currently are? And that is that we have a fund that has been established, that is um, uh, being being paid into, to um, to do this, and then do you support? Do you not support? Or do you need more? I don't know. I need more information. I think that would be a good that would be a worthwhile question. It would get at the the uh, you know I think what. Um, the it, it would really help us in understanding where we are and in what we're recommending for the um, uh, uh, in our in our plan that we will submit in June. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz, Dr. Rhodes, and then uh, you, know, you know, Dr. Shabazz, you, you hit on something that. Uh, we really should deal with in this survey, probably in that uh, the uh, preamble or in, in the beginning of this survey, uh, by saying what reparations are. You know, reparations. You know, there there are there are some standard words, and wording, and standard kinds of things that reparations uh, seeks uh, to do, and it's it's you know it, it could be done in a sentence or two. Just to say, what you know, when someone says, "Well, what are reparations?" Well, there's an answer to that, and and that needs to be somewhere. And you're correct, Doctor Chavez, because it's not there, and it needs to be there. You know, I, we're here, we're talking about reparations, but no one and nowhere in there does it say, "Well, reparations is A or B or whatever." Somewhere in there, we have to deal with that question. What, what is or are reparations? Alexis, thank you, Dr. Rhodes. Alexis? I, 
Um, I I can really get down with what the the amendment to the question I think that that Dr. Shabazz suggested, and I guess I'm wondering, being that our you know the reparations in Amherst that we're talking about is not the same as federal reparations. I, I think that it's it's hard to say what is reparations when it's very in in our instance it's very contextual. It's 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 in the context of where we are. It's in the context of how much money we're being allotted. Like there's there's a lot of context in this. Um, and so I think I think that it, we might bypass some of the discrepancies and controversy in that if if we say if it's about what we're doing specifically and then I'm wondering so like I, I agree with how Dr. Shabazz phrased it but I guess I'm wondering if it if it could add anything to also have a open question option to say you know okay like if you felt like you don't agree or yeah I guess if, if you don't agree then like how could we change it or something or like what do you feel like could be changed about how we're specifically going about this. I don't know. So just a couple of things from what I'm hearing, and I think you're bringing up a good point, Alexis, about if you don't agree, I don't think there's a single space um, on the survey as we speak for a person, at least if it's possible in the section for people who identify as Black and of African heritage to provide input, but we don't have any narrative spaces that are just about if you don't agree with it, there's nowhere really for anybody. Um, I'll have to check at the end to see if there's any like final thoughts type of narrative. Um, I also want to um, reflect back that I heard um, that maybe the possibility of a preamble or in our preamble to include what a local reparations program seeks to do verse and 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 compare that or to at least say that we that it, it that, that our work is 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 not um, and, and I, I will get with Dr. Shabazz and others for wording on this, but that w this is not a federal reparations program and that th that what we're pursuing is a local reparations initiative. And what does that, you know, what are sort of the confines or the contextualization of that? Um, so I think that that might be something that's really worthwhile putting in our preamble up here and then being able to, as Dr. Shabazz say, do you support the town's decision to establish this local fund and to pursue this local initiative? Because the way it's st stated right now is it's a, it's a very political question and it doesn't get at whether you're uh, agreeing on a national level, on a local level, whether you're, you know, it's, it really isn't in my mind getting at anything that could be helpful for us, but this new way of, I think, um, framing it really would get us the information that we, that would be useful for us. Very quickly, one thing I do is I just pop back to our charge and it speaks of reparations and of the municipal reparations fund as part of a community-wide process of reconciliation and repair for harms against Black people. So, you know, for me, always, when in doubt, go with what our original, you know, starting point, what our original charge is. So it is about, you know, harms against Black people. Um, and, uh, um, and trying to deal with that in a community on a community level, but you you raise a good question. Uh, in that our process understands and supports things at a national level, is it would it be a diversion or or off topic to ask the question of whether one supports uh, as a separate question does one support or not the um, you know reparations at the federal level, particularly with the uh, objective of closing the racial wealth gap. But again, I'm I'm not suggesting we need that question. I know we've got a lot more to get through, but I just throw that out there for thought. 
Yeah, thank you. I think that we should definitely sit with that. Um, and I think we should even maybe take it a step further and decide if in our, I mean, I, I guess this isn't necessarily the place for the AHRA to put out opinions about where we stand in terms of support of the federal level reparations, um, particularly to close the racial wealth gap. But this is a platform that we have. Um, and if that is a message that we want to make loud and clear, this could be a place to do that. So I would ask that the, the, the committee consider that. Um, okay, so let's move on here because we do we do have a lot to get through um and so now we're going to come down to um thinking about your own experience uh these are questions that are right now only set up for um because we they were initially uh this next set of questions which asks about systems were set up for everybody but we Irv and I reworked these last week with the Dunahue Institute. So um, this uh, here is prefer not to say, are we kind of going with the same theory not to include prefer not to say, or um, do people have thoughts on that? I like the question overall. I, I still question the necessity of that as opposed to just skipping. Okay, great. And then this will give folks a, a, a chance to, to put in um, any details they would like to share. Uh, there's no limit on that in terms of words. Um, okay, here's what we, we went through these last week um, and <clears throat> we had a couple changes that we asked to be made here. Um, we had the economic system, the healthcare system, the public elementary and secondary educational system. Um, this one here, I wanted to check in with you all about. So in the conversation this morning with the Dunahue, um, the question of um, sort of community experience, so whether it's being in the library and it being a white space or walking down the street, um, is that a system? We talked about that last time. And one thing that came to mind for me was just this sort of conversation we have in Amherst about spaces being white spaces and whether or not uh, Black residents are engaging in um, the political system, in committees, um, whether it be town council committees or even just community municipal community events. So that's sort of where it was maybe gonna get worked in here unless folks felt strongly that um, having a separate system was necessary in, in, in that regard. Um, can we you did- scroll, Can you scroll sure. back up of to- Of course. Um, the one before the elementary school. Yes. So the healthcare system. Um, are we asking this as a general question? Because many of the folks who's, who have healthcare, let's say in Amherst, it's connected to their jobs. Is this about, I'm saying, I'm not sure there's gonna, this is, this is like wildly anecdotal information, <laughs> you know? I, I'm just not sure what, how, um, if it's designed to gauge something about the population in Amherst and their relationship with their own health systems, health, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm not sure. Yeah, and it even came up today that the healthcare system, are we talking about mental health? Are we talking about physical health? Are we, right. there's a lot to that. Do we wanna be able to see the difference? You know, um, so I don't know what other folks think about that. Um, it's so open ended is what I'm saying. I'm not sure what kind is. of um, yeah, what kind of information we're trying to get to. Um, the public elementary and secondary educational system makes a little bit more sense because it's our town's elementary and secondary education system. I mean, it's Amherst system, right? 
Um, so I see that you will get some good information there. And then the economic system is the same thing. Like, uh, is this the United States? No. So the intention of all of these, and Irv made this very clear um, in our meetings, is the Amherst economic system, the Amherst healthcare system, the Amherst public elementary and secondary. So it sounds to me like we need to add that. Amherst, to yeah. To even, even though it's up the top anyway. Yes, I exactly. Would. I would. Yeah, okay. Just as a Perfect. reminder. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Um, and then, of course, down here, we put um, Hampshire County Courts because Amherst doesn't have their own courts and judicial system. Um, so that's how we dealt with that one. Um, and then um, here we wanted to see, OK, we added a Jennifer Moyston's uh, recommendation last week. We added social services. Um, and so one question that we, you know, is whether there was a distinction between social services and, and health care. But I think that that's sort of been answered if we put Amherst in front of everything. And um, and then uh, there's two additional questions here. One, based on the feedback we got last week, are there other systems that we haven't identified? And then would you like to share your experiences with any of these systems as an open-ended question so that folks can expand um, if they'd like to share in a more of a narrative way? Any questions on these or shall I move forward? Okay. All right. Oh, here we come with the people would peoplehood. Um, so this is the question that I was saying. If you answered that you identify as descendant of an enslaved person, then you would be brought only you would see this question. And this was Dr. Shabazz's. Uh, we talked about this last week. Um, Dr. Shabazz, I this is what we put as a preamble here. Um, however, I'd like to get to understand from you or others um, what question we're asking here, what I, we're I trying. Think I think it's in the ballpark. It's it's a bit long, and I'm not sure right now the value of the the parenthetical information. But but this is um, this is a good start. Okay, why don't I send this to you? And if you want to take a look at it and then send me back some thoughts on a question? Will do, thank you. Okay, anyone else is welcome to as well. Uh, obviously, yeah. So let's see here, all right. Um, okay, so here is where we get into um, the eligibility questions. And I just wanna make sure um, that I'm following all my notes. Um, okay. All right. So uh, the first question, these are, this is going to kind of be, um, I think, a bit of a discussion for us. So before we get into it, I'm going to ask for a time check. Um, what time, if we could just start with you, Hala, and you could say what time you need to leave today? I'll come back to Hala. Um, Dr. Shabazz? I'm here. I have class at four. Okay. Um, and Alexis? I'm available. Okay. Yvonne? I'm available. Are we going till four or 3.30? I mean, I'd like us to, if we can get through the rest of the survey, because if we don't, it's um, really going to sure. set us back. So if I, we have, can... I have time till four. Okay, great. And Dr. Rhodes? Yeah, I'm I'm here because I really, really want to get to the end of this survey. Okay. Um, we don't have a lot of time left to get, deal with this. Okay, great. 
So um, these are the two uh, primary questions that we have right now on eligibility. Um, and these uh, are set up right now only um, for people who identify as Black and of African heritage. Um, so the first is, should descendants of enslaved individuals be eligible? And then this one is the, the one that we really need to open up for discussion. Um, how do we want to pose this question? Is there a particular date or milestone here that we want to include? Dr. Rhodes, maybe you want to share what your thoughts were on this, if, if you're up for it right now? Or... Yeah, I, um, to, to put any kind of milestone in there, like a date, like 1865 or 1868 or whatever, uh, assumes and also would require some kind of proof. And uh, it seems to me that we're not in that game. We're, we're not in any position to uh, judge whether a person was or was not uh, here, uh, their ancestors are here before or after that date. Uh, it would also, uh, it, it assumes also that we would have some way of verifying that. So, uh, to me, that's it's to put a milestone in um, is problematic at best. Anyone else like to weigh in on this? I. Uh, I agree. Maybe it, this uh, question's a little preliminary before we can really know what requirements we might have for um, identification. So let me let me ask the question like this. I uh, guess. And, and I'm also not adverse to the question. I think there's a big debate about whether this is something that is valid in the whole idea of reparations. I think, I mean, I've had people who've been sending me stuff and asking questions, and I'm sure that everyone else on this committee as well. I mean, I'm not against having this in here because it, it, again, it goes back to what information we're trying to glean from these questions. And this one, um, yes, no, I don't know. Um, even if 50% of the people answer, I don't know, then, then again, it tells us something about um, what's out there. Like people, maybe people are curious, but they don't have all information that they need actually to make decisions. Um, so hmm. I'm okay with leaving it in. Okay, Dr. Shabazz, I I don't see the 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 value of of these these questions uh, separately like this. I could see the question: Should um, eligibility for reparations be limited to descendants of individuals who were enslaved in the United States. Um, that would kind of put the two of them together and, um, and give you the information as to where, again, the snapshot of people who fill out this survey really, really feel. I, finally, I'll say this in regards to, to both questions. And, and the extent to which they are, um, and, and how I see it may support the position that I'm advocating for the assembly. Um, I've, you know, I've, I put out a little document, uh, uh, black paper, if you will, earlier on. I, I hope we will, uh, I expect we will be revisiting and discussing this a little more thoroughly. I am for a, I am advocating that we acknowledge as a, a um, as a priority or as a community of concern or maybe at the center of our work uh, is the question of black individuals in Amherst, residents of Amherst, who do have a lineage that goes to someone who was enslaved in the United States. That that is a that is a priority community, but um, but I prefer to conceive of a way of 
thinking about our reparative justice work as one that can center and hold space for that particular community within the Black population of Amherst, but does not, um, but doesn't make the initiatives purely um, exclusively about that group, ethnic group, national uh, minority group, whatever you want to say. Um, in that, I uh, um, I believe to get the most people on board is to have a more expansive idea about the 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 pos the, the 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 reparative justice process that the reparative justice process is expansive that it is inclusive of those who have also experienced um racialized trauma racial trauma and racial harm even though they do not have a lineage that extends to an ancestor that was enslaved in the US um so for me, it's not one or the other, it's both and. And that's the framework I will continue to advance. However we vote it up or down, that's the framework I'm going to advance. So, so these questions here are a little bit, eh, kind of seem to me a little bit at odds, but, um, but again, I'm not afraid of a question that does ask the public that takes this survey do what they think about it. Do they think it ought to be, you know, uh, specifically limited? Eligibility ought to be limited to exclusively this group. That's fine if we want to get that snapshot answer. Um, I would like to think, however, it, you know, of questions that might get people to think about it in a more expansive terms. But but that's fine. Either way, you all want to go on this. Can I um, just ask you a follow up and then I'm going to go to Dr. Rhodes. Um, Dr. Shabazz, I, I like that languaging, the way that you've reframed that to combine these questions. And I think that gets more thoroughly at what we're trying to establish. Um, were you implying that you think this should go to all community members or that if we were to combine and have one question like you've outlined it, should it go um, still only to residents who identify as Black and of African heritage. So right now you're telling me these questions are just popping up if you've checked that the box that you're Black, that you identify as Black, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, so it could be exclusively within that community that are saying, identifying as Black that we're asking this question to. I'm not afraid of it being asked on the larger level as well, but in either case, these are really, it, 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 it's going to give us feedback that to me is really neither here nor there to what I'm going to be advancing, because what I'm advancing is, again, not based upon the, the definitions uh, or, or, the, or the Darity model at a national level. It's about right here locally, how do we think of this process in the most expansive way that deals with racialized harm against Black people overall, not exclusively to Black people who have lineage of an ancestor in the United States. That's just where I am on it. But again, I'm, I'm not afraid to asking it to the, to the whole survey or to just the subset of Black folks taking the survey. It's fine either way. Thank you. Dr. Rhodes? So, uh, Dr. Shabazz, I, we, uh, I like what you're saying, but, but the, I want to go back to the first part of the first question to say, should descendants of enslaved individuals, uh, I don't know if you have different language for that, but I was thinking that it should say, should descendants of enslaved individuals who lived in Am Amherst be eligible for reparations? Well, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a it's an interesting question to ask. Um, either way, like I said, these it, it will just be kind of of data to see you know what people are thinking about it. You know the ones the the interesting thing, for example, um, you know the bridges 
ancestor who was enslaved was not enslaved in Amherst. The ancestor of the Bridges family was enslaved, I think it was in Maryland. So, you know, they weren't, they don't descend from, from someone who was enslaved in Amherst. I don't know that there's a person alive that descends no. from anyone who was enslaved in Amherst. No, I, I, yeah, but I, I guess what I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying something different. I'm saying should descendants of enslaved individuals who live, who live, that currently live in Amherst, be eligible for reparations? Doesn't it doesn't say hey they had to uh, that the people had to be enslaved in Amherst? Is that I'm sorry, I misunderstood you? No, right. that's a good question. It's a valid question. Okay, I'd love to get Ms. Bridges to weigh in on this as well. So I will um, be in contact with her. Um, good. Very good. <clears throat> so if it's okay, I'm going to take that feedback um, and and I'll work. We'll work. Dr. Rhodes and I will work with um, with the Dunhue to to rework this a bit. And I'd like to move on if that's okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there is an open-ended question here. If there are other eligibility eligibility criteria that uh, one feels should be considered, okay. So here we get to um, the type of repair. Um, and one question that I had here, um, as we go through these, uh, actually two that I want to highlight, I asked for uh, Dunahue to add cash payments. Um, and I'm gonna just tell you why. I know we talked about this last week and I know that what I heard last week was that if we don't have something in place right now that allows for cash payments to occur, then we shouldn't ask the question. Um, but what we learned with Robin here on Thursday is that Evanston, just recently, uh, maybe two weeks ago, approved cash payments as part of their reparations program after doing and going through some, you know, legal work that they needed to go through. So I'm open to what folks, I, I put it on here so that to, to have a conversation about it. I also want to say that these are in no particular order. So if there is an order that folks would like for us to think about these in or have these placed in, um, that that's part of this discussion. I also asked that they added, do you support financial assistance for renting a home as a means for repair? Um, because I don't think we should assume that people want to have a home that they own. Um, so the floor is open. I see Dr. Shabazz and then Alexis. Or I'm sorry, I saw Dr. Rhodes and then Alexis and then Dr. Shabazz. It's all you, Dr. Rhodes. <laughs> and then we'll go to- No, I, I, my hand was up. I should have lowered it because I'm, all these things, uh, it, as far as I'm concerned, there are questions that are really good to ask to get information on, including the past payment thing, because that is something that is uh, always a controversial one. And to know how folks are thinking about it here in Amherst is, would be really, really helpful. Okay. And right now, um, I believe this is open to all uh, respondents. Is there a uh, is there an opinion on that about whether it should be limited or open to all respondents? Huh. Because uh, yes, Alexis, please. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I put it there. But um, I I I would I, I would like to go after Dr. Shabazz. <laughs> I don't see Dr. Shabazz's hand raised anymore. So I'm not, Dr. Shabazz, did you have your hand up still? Or would you like to speak? Nope, these are all good. Okay, Alexis. Okay, um, I guess I'm wondering what would be the point of asking everybody if everybody's not going to receive them? Um, 
I guess if, if somebody has a good argument for yes, but I, I think that my inclination is to have this only be for the folks that say that they're black. Um, I think this is a really interesting discussion because um, I will say, I will share that I had a district one meeting recently um, and a white resident asked when, after my presentation asked when uh, the public, all of the public would have the ability to weigh in on how the funds how the funds should be used. So we're talking about type of repair that you support. Um, but really, are we also talking about how the funds should be used in terms of how we're going to um, understand the data that we receive and interpret the data that we receive? Um, and so, I think that there is an expectation from members of the or members of the community that do not identify as black and of African heritage that they will have the ability to weigh in and yet the most primary tenant of reparative justice is that the harmed community decides. So I'm yes Alexis please. No yeah you you ended with what I was going to say and it feels it so if 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 it is necessary for us to know how folks that aren't black to know how they feel about it, which like I I'm I'm not sure about that, but if if we did need that, couldn't there be a, a separate question where like if you did say that you weren't black or and of African heritage, that you do get like a separate so that so that like if we did need to collect that information, that it's it's listed separately, like that data is listed separately from the answer that the folks that are black answer it. But I, I agree that I, I think it's I think it's harmful because there's already this notion of like, well, I'm not gonna give you the money unless I, I agree with how you're gonna spend it. And, and that's been a harmful narrative that's been present since the beginning, so. Absolutely. And I think we can disaggregate this information. So we'll be able to see who is responding and identifies as Black and of African heritage versus who is does not identify that way. So it actually may be really interesting to look at the two. And I think it was Pamela that sort of said that, you know, ideally, and I don't want to speak for Pamela. So if I'm speaking out of turn, let me know, Pamela. But like, if if we see that there's a lot of similarities between those, you know, then that's that's an inter that's interesting, versus seeing that there are differences um, in the way that uh, people who do not identify as black and of African heritage see the, that the that the funding or that the type of repair should happen. I do wonder though if we should include in this preamble that basic tenant um, about the harmed. The giving using this again as a platform to communicate something to the public to say that a basic tenet or the primary tenet of reparative justice is, is that the harmed community decides how the atonement process or how the repair process should occur. And I wonder if people have thoughts on including just a, a sentence or so about that. I, could you summarize that again? I'm, um, you know, the, this is feeling kind of long, so I'm I'm not yep. excited about adding too many too many more. <laughs> yeah, uh, fair enough, Dr. Shabazz. Um, it is feeling kind of long. Um, I was just saying quickly that in this little preamble that I'm up here circling, um, is it is it worth adding a sentence or two just to communicate? or educate um, to all of the community who is seeing this, including um, people who are not black, um, that the primary that that's a primary tenant uh, of reparative justice that the harmed community decides, or is that sort of like saying that and then asking is like, well, what's the, you know, I'm just wondering if it makes Thank sense. That, that clarified. Here's the thing I think we have to um, really think about clearly for ourselves, the, the survey 
is a set of is to provide us back with some information and an analysis that helps to inform our report uh, writing, our our process. Um, I don't see it as in and of itself um, directing, you know, that that this is suddenly now determining um, the 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 course of reparations. We've done a lot of other things and they're all valid inputs. Our listening sessions, our weekly, you know, almost weekly meetings and the public comments we've had come before us. Um, you know, th there's there's just been so many things we've done. And this survey, whether it gets filled out by a hundred people or a thousand people, or or 10,000 people, you know, it's still a just another data point of a, of an entire process. So I don't think we have to load it up with preambles and 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 you know whatever that that because it's not what is determining what our final uh uh report is going to be, our final decisions let alone the final decisions of what the council will support or of what will actually be done down the line somewhere. So, you know, I, I just, uh, that that's how I'm looking at it. Uh, if others see it the same way, then, then yeah, I think we, we can just take it as, as part of our, part of our consultative informational information gathering process. Excellent. Okay. Um, and just before we move on from this, if anybody has um, an opinion on placement, that if you're seeing something that you don't like the placement or you'd rather the placement look different, please call that out. Yes, Dr. Rhodes. One thing to keep in mind, this document, this survey, once it is completed, will be utilized and looked at by all kinds of folks in this town as uh, for an information source in terms of making decisions, including the town council, et cetera. Yep. It is going to be a data, it's going to be a data point that is constantly going to be referred to this survey. And people need to keep that in mind. May I offer one question on this one that's on the center of the screen right now in terms of symbolic what's being referenced as symbolic acts. Yes. Um, you know, and, and I'm asking this of all of my committee members to, to kind of weigh in, but I have really thought of whether uh, at some point we ought to be asking uh, the town if um, uh, surveying around the town support as part of this whole process, a conversation ought to be had on changing the name of this town. Um, you know, Jeffrey Amherst was the military officer over the settler colonies uh, that not only was part of eliminating the indigenous people, but also of maintaining the uh, the emergence of uh, a the the racial um, uh, enslavement of of African people. That was part of the the you know the law and order that he upheld as the chief military officer. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's really, you know, whether you see it as again, part of a, a, a symbolic uh, struggle or not, I think it is, it is definitely one that has been on my mind throughout. Um, it's even one that was on, the, that uh, Sandy Darity challenged me, uh, uh, through it, through the challenge to me um, when he spoke at the, uh, uh, program for for Jules Chemetsky that if we really were about something as the African Heritage Reparations Assembly why why don't we talk about the need to change the name of this town and and you know and my answer back to him is you know uh, I yes I agree it's 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 a it's a relevant discussion for local reparative justice that we consider and ask the town uh, uh, ask members who people who fill out this survey, do you support um, the, uh, symbolic acts inclusive of 
a conversation on changing the name of this town? Whoa. Yeah. Dr. Rhodes, did you want to respond to that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling it, Dr. Shabazz, for this question. I, I think that that would take us down a whole other road that we don't need to go down with this uh, particular survey. It, it, um, it adds another dimension uh, that uh, uh, does, really does not need to be added at this particular point in time for our purposes, for our uh, for our purposes as a, uh, the reparations assembly. I just, yeah, that, that would cause all kinds of other issues that we don't need to have uh, be attached to this at this particular point in time. Any other opinions of assembly members? I think Alexis, I'm just taking a look in the room here. Alexis um, just said she had to go for briefly. So she's not here, um, but I believe she is coming back. Um, yes. Um, I do agree that that um, is a topic that has been brought up many times about changing the name. I don't, I actually don't know um how far it's ever gotten um and i think that if we're going to include something in our final report that says where what stance and where we think amr should be then i think yes we should include that in our report i'm not sure that we want to start it um in this survey but i definitely think that um if we're asking questions like this that's like um, do you support this one thing as a means of repair? Some of them are like this one says symbolic acts and public apologies, et cetera, memorials. Um, I think that it warrants us addressing this idea of changing the name of the town um, as a recommendation and then subsequent um, action to follow up with that if that's the charge of this committee or another committee. Uh, but I think that if we're going to move forward with trying to change the name of the town as something that we support, then it's not going to just be this committee. It's going to be us partnering with other town committees and other people to actually make it a reality, if it becomes that at all. So I do agree that it's something we should address. I'm not, just not sure that this is the vehicle to address it right now. That That's fair. I appreciate uh, both answers. Um, I, maybe just uh, besides saying public apologies, memorials, or commemorations, we could just say in that stream. Uh, um, uh, naming. Renaming, renaming spaces. In fact, maybe even more so than public apologies. We've already sort of, you know, done the big resolution in that respect, but, but public, public, uh, um, but renaming spaces. Uh, mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go along with that. Renaming spaces, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. All right. Great. I'm going to move on here. Um, okay. These are the sustain, sustain, sustaining our work questions. Um, so we have a little preamble just to say that our charge ends and we want to ensure continuation um, of our work and the recommendations that we've made. Um, this is what we have here. Would you like to see the town of Amherst form another committee or assembly to continue the work of the AHRA to ensure recommendations are acted upon? Instead of another, could it be a successor sure. or a competing committee? Yeah, I think that's what was the second word you used? A successor or succeeding committee or assembly? Yep. Um, I wanted to get feedback because these are two similar questions, but they could have very different functions. Um, so the second one leans in more to Dr. Shabazz's, uh, thought process around like a CPA type model, I think Dr. Shabazz. Um, so a committee that would specifically, 
um, be, be tasked with making recommendations to allocate the money in the fund. Um, do, do we want to be asking two different questions here on the, in the same vein? Not necessarily. If it's a successor group, you know, and then money, money was a part of the original group, money should be a part of the, the successor group. You folks you know, mostly I don't think you need the second question, you know, breaking out specifically about about the money money was part of the original charge of AHRA. So if we're creating a successor kind of body, that body would would take up the same you know, a similar charge of which included, you know, the question of, of disbursement of funds. Okay. I think the, uh, the phrasing of the question, if you go back up, sure. um, it's, um, this, so with the town has made a, um, has, has made a dedication to actually doing this work by allowing about by creating a committee and so the perpetuation of that committee i think is the question more than you know um would you like to see them form another committee mm. i think it's the continuation of the work that we're getting at and the and you know we want the town to so maybe the question is you know do you agree with the town supporting the continuing work of a committee to work on reparations. You know what I'm saying? Not, not a, you know, it could, I mean, they might call it another committee, but this is the work that we started and the town is our partner in it, you know, so. I love um, that. Yeah, that really makes a lot of sense. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. I'm saying because another committee gives you that idea that people are starting from scratch and it's not starting from scratch. It's not another committee. It's continuing the reparations work. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, okay. And then this question is, would you like to see educational opportunities um, designed to build and sustain support for reparations? Um, and then this one here is about the creation of a private reparations fund managed by a black stakeholder body. Um, <laughs> Just don't know uh, if we've got much of a foundation established in, in terms of community, educating the community about that one. I don't know. What do others think? I see Yvonne shaking her head. I'm not sure why, but... <laughs> <laughs> please so i think some of i think this question um i think it's a valid question i think saying that the stakeholder has to be a black body is the part that's like are we saying we we want that to be that way or it's a requirement of a of a private reparations fund because there are plenty of allies who are not black people that could manage you know that could be included like we're this question um pushes away all of the allies that might maybe fund a reparations fund if i understand you and i think this is important you're you're raising the question of of management versus ownership and and the directing of the spending of it and whereas um, it, we learned a while back uh, when we visit, visited Evanston, they were creating, they had gone through a sort of a local community fund for a while, was actually managing gifts that were coming in for reparations. And they, you know, and they managed it. But then when it came to decisions of how those funds should be spent, it went to this, this group that was uh, Black black directed i don't know well i, I which is why it, it it is directly related to this idea of how the town will continue to support reparations i mean i think it's a it's about sustaining you know that sustaining that effort yeah um with while also creating a system for how reparations you know are distributed there's a whole system 
a part of me feels like this should not this question shouldn't be in here until we have a you know as a group we which i don't think we're going to get during our term we're already like i said before supported you know like by having a town committee so the town is you know supposedly i know it's probably just because of i don't know what i'm saying that the town has already supported this by having a committee so how well, I think the part the one of the charges of this committee was how the monies would what the policies would be and how the monies would be distributed and then to ask a question that's like would you do you want a private reparations fund if you keep the question and then there aren't any there shouldn't be any other um qualifiers because we're still trying to figure out what those qualifiers are yeah. as a committee you know as a committee so, so we don't need to qualify that question. We just need to ask, do you think it's a good idea to have a private reparations fund? Because yeah. the money we're getting now is not private money, right? It's all town money. So there's lots of little distinctions in this question that open up larger, larger questions. So fundamentally, would the edit be, uh, uh, should there be created a private reparations fund uh for uh uh for amherst in amherst yeah. yes okay. that, that's what i'm thinking it's just ask the question should there be one yeah you know? I can see. yeah I can see. Do, you, do you want to say though at least to say um for the benefit of black amherst residents i mean a reparations fund generally if it's not if we're not indicating that it's for black residents reparations could be seen as for all sorts of groups so yeah, for, for black members residents right okay. exactly yeah okay but not i i see the distinction okay yeah perfect okay yeah, i agree with that yeah definitely because you know someone you know someone's going to jump in and say reparations for everyone right you know, there's so other groups that, that yeah. are owed reparations yeah. and and maybe those need to be but that's not what we're doing right, right. and as far right. as managing that particular fund that's a bigger question that we should tackle as we do our committee work great all right we're getting close here um so here is um a question and this might be one that you want to provide an email to myself and pamela and um jennifer on if we aren't going to do it right here live um, but this is to say that we're recommending a truth and reconciliation process for Amherst. Now, I do want to highlight something that Robin said on Thursday about Evanston and at least her philosophy on a truth and reconciliation process. Um, she was asked a question at the public forum or at the town hall about doing a truth and reconciliation process. And her question, her response was very direct. She said that it was her philosophy that other organizations, and I'm paraphrasing, in Evanston should sort of hold up that end of the work, and that what she was focused on was very much the legislative aspects of the reparations program and the direct benefits to people, to Black residents, not, not so much focused on a whole community-wide uh, which includes folks that are not black reconciliation process. So, but our charge does talk about truth and reconciliation. So I think we have to think about that from both perspectives and wonder if there are thoughts on that. Please select all that you would like to see Amherst pursue and so the question you're asking is, what are some of the items that would be filled out here if we agree? Yes, exactly, exactly. Okay. Well, A for me would be uh, uh, the question of renaming the town of Amherst. Okay, okay. <laughs> back to that one for me. <laughs> A truth and reconciliation process on the name of the town of Amherst. <laughs> okay, on the name of. I'm going to just throw these in here and we can discuss them, okay? Okay. Okay. 
if you've captured this question so that we can move on and make our timeline, if you've captured this question in your mind or you've screenshotted it or, or however, um, you could send me and Jennifer and Pamela, your thoughts on this. Um, and, and we can go, we can take it from there. Um, because I think it is, it takes a little more thinking probably maybe. Um, and I'm, all right. One of the other ones to perhaps capture is the idea of of uh, cannabis and the you know uh, disproportionate uh, criminalizing uh, and and mass incarceration of people of African descent when when uh, cannabis was illegal. That you know there ought to be um, uh, particular efforts made to uh, identify people who. Um, have been harmed uh, here in Amherst, and uh, and think of ways that, you know, whether some direct cash, whether help getting into employment or um, getting their records expunged. I mean, I don't know. I know some things like this are are envisioned at the state level, but maybe there's a need locally to just even counsel people. And uh, it's a question of whether you know, Crest people or somebody could be trained to uh, to help, you know, uh, talk to folks in the community uh, that might might need help around um, around that area. But uh, but I'll think of others in terms of, a, you know, relative to truth and reconciliation. I, I got the snapshot in my head. OK, um, so I see Dr. Rhodes and then Yvonne and um, I am going to stop my share real quick. Um, because I see a third person, but it's someone in the audience. And since I did say the meeting would be ending close to four, there might be someone who's trying to make public comment. So I just, um, please bear with me a second. Yes. So we do have someone in the audience. So um, what I'm going to do is pause this discussion just for a moment. We have one person who has their hand raised in the audience, and that will conclude our second period of public comment. And then we'll finish the meeting by um, finishing the discussion on this. And we're basically done. We have one other thing to cover quickly, and then we'll be done. So um, I'm Kiara, I'm in charge here, I, I think right now, um, because uh, so let me see if I can do this. Um, let's see here. I think it's, I think you should be moving over. <laughs> it's like that moment when they're no longer in the attendees, but they haven't joined as a panelist there. There we go. Hi, Kiara. Okay. Can you I, hear? I Okay, now I can, I think. All right. <laughs> the floor is yours. Thank you. I just had a, a couple comments um, quickly. So um, pertaining to the survey, I wanted to ask uh, whether there's a working definition uh, for African heritage or, or descent, uh, because that's a very you know expansive and kind of, kind of a nebulous concept. So I'm curious if you can provide within your survey a definition for that so people know what um, that's referring to. Um, also, um, the question about whether you're a descendant of enslaved people. Um, so what I want to say is, regarding that question, it's not it's not so much what we're trying to get at when we when we're saying you know slavery, descendant of slavery, et cetera. That's not necessarily like the 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 main part of the conversation. Conversation. It's more about the ethnic group of Black Americans, like as a Native Black American, because not everybody has necessarily traced their descent to a person that was enslaved. So I, I'm asking if you can uh, perhaps. Uh, maybe alter that alter that question just a little bit to indicate that it's not asking you whether or not you've done your genealogy confirmed to be a descendant of an enslaved person, but rather conveying that you are, are someone who is a native Black American or um, we're we're here for that for that particular atrocity um, because slavery is just is just one element of the the genocide as a whole. It's not like the singular factor. Um, also, uh, I'm asking if you can ask um, descendants specifically what reparations looks like to them. I know um, Alexis kind of raised that a little bit earlier in terms of the context of Black or African heritage people, but you can also ask that question specifically to descendants um, so, so you can actually see that data and compare it um, as needed to the broader population. Um, also, I want to note that 
um, historically Black Americans have been actually ethnically cleansed out of Amherst. So our proportionality, even, even within the Black population in Amherst is going to be low. So your data is gonna be skewed in that way anyway, in terms of the feedback. And I also want to note, want to note that I sent you all um, some information. I know I've been saying in, in past times about the Office of Management and Budget and the, the work that is happening at the grassroots level to ensure that Black Americans, ethnic Black Americans have a, an actual uh, reporting category on government documents and how important that is in terms of um, genocide prevention in this country. Ensuring that you know, we have actual better access to federal funding, that the resources actually make their way to our community um, and it will actually track our you know, civil rights violations against our population and also to give us more accurate data um, concerning our population. And unfortunately, there are some organizations that are trying to resist this work. Um, they're actually having emergency meetings this week to, to fight uh, against us um, being able to be recognized as an, as an ethnic group, as an actual people group in this country. And if, if your, your work is asking about peoplehood and, and that sort of thing, this is in, in direct violation of that effort. Um, and this is this is um, by the the National Black Cultural Information Trust, which um, the person who's founded this is actually a commissioner for NARC. Um, and so this is actually the pers the the perspective of many of the leading organizations um, are on the reparations issue. Um, so that's that's really a concern because this is actually a human rights issue. Having data equity is a human rights issue. It's not just Black Americans that are pursuing this. Asian Americans are actually leading the charge for data equity in this country. All communities are asking for this. So. It's deeply concerning that there is an effort underway to thwart the, the work that's been happening to ensure that Black Americans who are, who are have, have ties to this to this land, whose ancestors may have been enslaved on this on this land, to actually have equitable data on our population. It's really, really egregious and it's it's really, really um disturbing. And I'm I'm really uh, impacted by this. It's it's very hurtful. So I wanted to note that and you know, these organizations, I mean, I, I personally respect the work that has been done in terms of the, the laying the groundwork in past generations to, to, to further the issue of reparations, but I do not support ethnocide. And it's really, really disgusting if these organizations are in any way advising your process. So I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Kiara, can I just ask a follow-up? I didn't hear, there was a noise in the background. Your first comment about a working definition, and I didn't hear what you were asking about there. Yeah, so when you say African heritage, um, many people may assume that you're just meaning someone who is black or, you know, but African heritage can mean someone who is Hispanic or someone who's done their DNA and see that they have 12% African, like it's very, very broad. People within who are maybe, you know, North African who are currently classified as white, but are considered African. It's just, it's just not very specific. So I'm curious if you can just add some kind of working definition for African heritage or African descent, if there's any kind of temporal um, specifications for that, like the time period that your family was descendant of Africa, that sort of thing. So it's more clear. Okay, thank you so much, Kiara. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. I just kind of say one last thing that sure. the five injury areas of, of, of slavery that you all are, are using and referencing, peoplehood is, a, is the first one on the list. And for us to be being denied the right to, to have our ethnic identity and our distinct people recognized by our federal government is, is directly in violation with that tenant. So I wanted to just make sure that was clear. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, all right. So we are going to come back. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. Uh, so we were discussing um, the truth and reconciliation, and I see Vaughn's hand was up, and then uh, Irv's hand was up. I thought Irv was first, though, I think. Irv? Oh, so, um, I just... I just want to make sure that everyone understands that there is a direct correlation between the percentage of return in relationship to a survey and its length. And we really need to be really cognizant of the fact that this survey is rather long.
Yvonne? I agree. Um, <clears throat> this question about truth and reconciliation um, syncs with the other areas that we were asking questions about and been talking about, which is justice, health and wellness and housing. And so I think we should we should include those in this um, section about truth and reconciliation. Well, this says what process for Amherst, even if it is, as Dr. Shabazz said, um, some kind of like survey or um, information gathering tool for each one of those areas around um, justice and health and wellness and housing. Hmm. Earth? The, you know, the whole thing around housing uh, and uh, in this country uh, and, and where we're going, and, and just as a uh, background, I've been involved for the last two years in developing a uh, housing project. It's out to a real estate investment trust. But one of the things that's there that is incredible is that we're becoming a quickly a two-tier society, one of the very rich and the very poor. The middle do not exist. And it is something that is incredibly disturbing, but yet it's there. It is really there, and it's there in Amherst, and it's probably more in Amherst than anywhere else that I can imagine. And somehow, why I'm saying this is that because because of my being immersed in this to the point of where we're getting ready to launch when I get back to Am Amherst, a national program aimed at this, is that it is, and, and when you talk about African-Americans, uh, we are being you know, put into a position of almost um, housing servitude. And, and it is something that is uh, really deeply disturbing. I know it has nothing to do with this, but I, I guess when you mention housing and you see this uh, in relationship to reparations and how this impacts up, up, upon us in Amherst, it is incredi incredibly critical that this be addressed head on. And I'm not saying that we should address it, but it's something that we really need to have within our thought process. Yeah, I second that. Uh, Yvonne, your hand is still up. And I'm also seeing that we have lost a quorum. Um, so what's that? I said, we're out of business. We're, we're out of business. Out of business. Um, so, um, there was one additional matter to cover, but I am confident that we can deal with that between now and when this launches. So I'm not going to over stress about that. Um, oh, we have Hala back. So that is, we have Hala back. So that's great. Um, hi, Hala. Thank you. I, we, I was just saying that we lost a quorum and, and Irv said we were out of business. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so the only just quickly we can look at it and then people can send their, um, so we had gone through all these demographics and when we got to the question about, which was trying to capture the, um, income the, or the economic experience of people in Amherst, um, we, Initially, um, we had in the last 12 months, we've now changed this to ask the question. And then if you answer it broadly, it takes you to another question. And this is where we wanted input on what options to um, include here. So in the past 12 months, in the past year, in the past five years, um, and the bigger question is what are we really trying to get out of this? So if, if you, you know, what are we trying to get out of asking this? Is this a demographic question or is this actually, do we want to assess this more as part of the, the survey in terms of economic experience in Amherst? Um, so we can, 
certainly it's because it's it is six past four and we promised four and so we don't have to deal with this right now um I am going to hold a call a meeting for next Monday, given now that I know it's not a holiday. So that gives a little breathing room for us so we can still get things done and launched on the, uh, on Tuesday, the 11th. So are there any other questions or comments before I adjourn the meeting? Um, well, thank you. This is like heavy stuff, like not heavy, but like it's heady. I'm just, I'm just spinning <laughs> up this call then. Dr. Rhodes, did you have any comments before we adjourn? Oh, you're muted. No, I do not, but this has been a really good productive meeting. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you to everyone. I'm adjourning at 4.07 p.m. and we'll see you next week.